Why experts buy PLTR stock? SoFi Stock News, Catalysts, Updates, Price Targets, and Analysis. Hey there and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're diving headfirst into the world of stocks and market trends. And boy, do we have a lineup of articles that'll make your financial radar go wild. First up, we've got Ballander stock. Bank of America analyst sees further upside. Yup, you heard it right. Bank of America is throwing its predictions into the ring for Palantir, and you won't believe what they're saying. Get ready for some market magic. Next in our radar is the intriguing question. Is Palantir stock an undervalued gem? We'll dissect this gemstone and see if it's ready to shine brighter in your portfolio. Hint, there might be hidden treasures waiting to be uncovered. And last but not least, we're diving into the SoFi Stock Outlook. Yep, even with the resumption of student loans and the Biden factor, SoFi's growth is accelerating. Find out what's cooking in the world of personal finance and how it might impact your investment strategy. So get comfy, grab your notepad and join us as we unleash some financial wisdom that's bound to keep you ahead of the game. Let's get started. Palantir Stock Bank of America Analyst Sees Further Upside Palantir Technologies has had quite the ride lately. The past month saw a 24% drop in PLTR stock, but don't fret, it's still up a whopping 136% for the year. What's the story? Well, it's all about their third quarter guidance and the buzz around their new artificial intelligence platform or AIP. Bank of America analyst Mariana Perez Mora is feeling bullish, giving PLTR a buy rating and an $18 price target. She believes the August stock dip was due to a general AI market cooldown. Mora thinks Palantir is a heavyweight in the generative AI market, and its knack for delivering secure and compliant AI solutions hasn't been fully recognized. Palantir's uniqueness lies in its ability to roll out secure generative AI for both commercial and government clients. A big plus! Mora sees two potential game changers for Palantir. First, the eagerly awaited 360 million pounds National Health Service Data Procurement Contract decision expected by September 28th. Second, if Palantir reports another profitable quarter or Q3 2023 on a GAAP basis, it could join the S&P 500 club, reducing stock volatility and attracting more big investors. Kathy Wood's ARK Investment Management also picked up PLTR shares recently, showing confidence. But not everyone's on board. Morgan Stanley analyst Keith Weiss downgraded PLTR to sell, citing excitement about AI products and a lofty valuation. Wall Street's divided with a hold consensus rating, three buys, five holds, and six sells. The average price target is around $13.32, implying a potential downside of about 12.3%. Should you consider PLTR? It depends on your risk tolerance and investor profile. Is Palantir stock an undervalued gem? You see, Palantir is like that mysterious gem in your collection that keeps changing colors, and investors are wondering if it's about to sparkle even brighter. So here's the deal. Palantir, the big data and AI specialist, has had quite the roller coaster ride. They've sold their software to some of the biggest players on the planet, even US government agencies. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. Remember a couple of years ago when Palantir briefly became a meme stock? Yeah, that happened. Thanks to a devoted social media following and the backing of the one and only Kathy Wood, CEO of ARK Invest. But wait, there's more. Not long ago, Palantir was hailed as the messy of AI by tech analyst Dan Ives, comparing it to the sucker legend. Quite the range, huh? Now, after a mind-blowing 136% jump in their stock this year, Investors are at a crossroads. Should they cash in their chips or is there more room for growth? Let's talk valuation, shall we? When it comes to figuring out if a stock is undervalued or overvalued, there's no one-size-fits-all answer. Balanter faces some fierce competition from big tech giants like Microsoft, Alphabet, Amazon, Oracle, and Salesforce, 
all diving headfirst into the AI game. But here's the twist. I'm comparing Palantir to a more specific cohort of big data analytics growth stocks. You see, it's not just about how much they invest in AI. It's about what they focused on. Palantir is right there in the middle when it comes to the price to sales ratio, but there's more to the story. So what's Wall Street's take on this? Well, one of the loudest voices, Dan Ives of Wedbush Securities, made waves by calling Palantir the messy of AI. But here's the catch. His report suggests Palantir will hit $5 billion in revenue by 2027, and he slaps a $25 price target on it. That's over a 60% upside from the current stock price, but some folks are scratching their heads, wondering where those numbers come from. On the flip side, Morgan Stanley recently downgraded Palantir stock to $8, implying a 40% drop from current levels. Their rationality? They don't see Palantir's AI progress matching up with its impact on the company's bottom line. But here's the kicker. Palantir's management is shouting from the rooftops about the demand for their AI products. They've got AI deployed across 100 organizations and a pipeline with over 300 opportunities. Impressive, right? Yet, they're only guiding for around 16% growth this year, which is less than other AI champs like NVIDIA. Here's the deal, folks. Palantir is in a unique spot. Their software is used across various industries and the sales cycle can be a marathon. Plus, not every potential customer is ready to jump into AI just yet. It takes time. So should you buy the stock? Well, it's a bit like trying to predict the weather in a constantly changing climate. Some analysts think Palantir's AI potential is worth every penny, while others want to see more financial proof. With so many AI-focused companies out there, it's tough to pinpoint the exact value of Palantir's AI business. But here's my take. Don't chase short-term profits at the expense of long-term gains. Palantir's AI story is still unfolding, and I believe there's more to come. Dollar cost averaging over time might be the way to go. Keep an eye on this one because the real AI fireworks might still be on the horizon. SoFi Stock Outlook Despite Biden's Student Loans Resuming Growth Accelerating Now, SoFi, which stands for social finance, has been in the spotlight due to the resumption of federal student loan payments and interest charges. To put it simply, the pause on student loan payments and interest during the pandemic was a boon for borrowers, but it affected SoFi student loan revenue. Why? Well, when there's no need for borrowers to refinance federal student loans because they're not making payments, it impacts SoFi's business. Now, the good news is that this pandemic-era pause has come to an end. Federal student loan payments will be due again starting October 1st. Why is this good for SoFi? Because it means there's an incentive for borrowers to refinance through SoFi. The CEO, Anthony Noto, believes it's an opportunity, especially considering that there are over 40 million Americans with federal student loans, and SoFi has only refinanced around 1 million of them so far. That's a huge untapped market. But SoFi's story isn't just about student loans. They've been diversifying and have various revenue streams. In fact, their recent earnings report showed record-breaking performance. They've had nine consecutive quarters of record revenue and four consecutive quarters of record adjusted EBITDA. Plus, their lending segment is growing, and they've been strict with their credit standards, resulting in lower delinquency rates than industry averages. Now, about SoFi's valuation. They're not yet GAAP profitable, but they expect to reach that milestone in Q4. Instead of traditional valuation metrics like price to earnings, which doesn't apply when there are no earnings, the focus here is on the company's total addressable market, which is enormous considering the potential for financial technology to disrupt various sectors, including personal loans, student loans, home loans, and more. SoFi's strategy includes expanding its product offerings, which lowers customer acquisition costs and improves profitability. It's an approach that seems to be working, considering their impressive revenue growth. Another factor that benefits SoFi is rising interest rates. This increases their net interest margin on loans, which is a good thing for their business. 
Of course, there are risks involved. Competition is fierce and they're up against big players like banks. Interest rate volatility can impact their earnings. And SoFi stock can be quite volatile, typical for young growth companies. In conclusion, the article holds a hold rating for SoFi and it's ranked number 9 in their top 10 growth stock report. SoFi seems to be in a good position with a growing TAM, strong innovation, and an attractive valuation. While the end of the student loan pause is seen as a positive, investors should be aware of the potential volatility in SoFi's shares. If you're a long-term growth investor willing to ride out the ups and downs, SoFi could be worth considering for your portfolio. And that's it. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to our channel for more updates. Thank you for joining us on this video, and we hope to see you in the next one.